Today, we are going to be working on the area, we're gonna focus on this area between our ears, our neck, our chest right here, and our neck and shoulders back here. We're gonna do some other stretches too. But to start out, we're gonna to come to easy seated. And once we're here, let me back up so you can see. Find your breath. Once you get here, close your eyes if you can. Find your breath and really begin. Sorry, to um, close your eyes, begin breathing. And really while we're doing this simple inhale and exhale before we start, think to yourself, what is serving you? Right now we're in this yoga class together any thoughts, any worrisome ideas that float in your mind, it's not serving us right now. You want to be present. If you would, bring your arms aside, up overhead, palms together to heart center. Close your eyes. Focus on your breath. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. And the affirmation for the throat chakra is I speak. And one of my favorite quotes from a book by the great Dr. Seuss Say what you mean and mean what you say. Those that mind that don't, ma those who mind don't, no, those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Breathe. Now your next exhale, let's drop our hands down so that they're on top of our knees. Keep your eyes closed if you can. We're just gonna start out with some real, real gentle neck stretches. So first, let's start by dropping our heads forward. Try and keep your back straight. And slowly, we're gonna bring our ear, our right ear towards our right shoulder. Really wanna try and drop those shoulders down away from your ears. It's just so you feel this gentle stretch on the left of your neck. Try and keep your shoulders down and level. And then we're going to drop our head back and then bring our heads over to the left side. Whatever feels good, whatever gives you that stretch. If you have to modify this so that it works better for you, feel free. Nothing too crazy. Now your next exhale, we're gonna drop our heads forward. And now we're gonna do a circle clockwise round. Just really slowly. And after about your third one, we're going to meet back. Bring your chin up. And breathe. If you'd like to do a couple more, go ahead. Stay present. Remember to bring your focus back to where we are. If you'd like to go the other way, 
counterclockwise and drop your head forward. Bring to your left behind you so that your chin is up towards the ceiling and over to the right, back forward. And on your next breath, come back to easy seated. And we are going to do shoelace legs. So there is modification of this if you need. So you can work, you can stick a pillow or a blanket underneath your hips here. And that way it'll push your hips up and forward a little bit to help you achieve the shoelace legs. The shoelace legs. I'm going to right or left, whichever one works better for under. Bring your heel to your hip. On the left side, this is the side that I'm crossing under first. And then with your right leg, you're going to try and do the same thing. You want there to be some symmetry between your two legs. If you have an injury, if one side isn't doing it, take your blanket and just prop up the hip that you seem to be leaning on. You want to try and keep your feet flexed while you're in the shoelace legs. And then bring your hands out to the side, your arms to the side. We're gonna do eagle arms. We're going to bring our left arm up in front of us, bring your right arm around that left arm, and if you can, clasp your hands. Now while we're here, really want you to try and relax those shoulders. It might sound funny, but if you can, try and activate those shoulder blades Almost so you feel like they're trying to pinch together a little bit and draw them down from your ears. If you can, you should feel that intense stretch above your shoulder blades and right in between them. Try and keep your elbows up, at least at heart level. Remember to breathe. One more big breath here. And release your hands. Slowly bring your arms down. When you're ready, slowly unwrap your legs. And we're gonna do the other side. Whatever leg was um on top previously, we're going to have it on the bottom again. Try and meet your hip with your feet. And then for our eagle arms here, bring our arms out of the side, up, bring our right arm in, and then wrap that left arm around. Do the same thing, be very mindful of where your elbows are. Don't let them drop. Keep them up and try and relax those shoulders that you can feel some kind of movement. Maybe they glide. We'd like for them to try and pinch together in this stretch to give it a little bit deeper into those shoulder blades in your neck. Wherever you feel that stretch. Breathe into that while we're here. In your shoulders and in your neck. We carry so much tension here. 
and try and loosen some of that up. Remember, while we're here, stay present with the rest of our body too. Make sure your sits bones are still grounded. Make sure your spine is straight. Remember to breathe. And on your next exhale, we're going to slowly release these arms. And on your next exhale, slowly unwrap your legs. When you're ready, we are going to come down to our mats on our bellies. And, sorry. We are going to come into Sphinx pose. You have blocks, you're more than welcome to use them. You can Put your hands on top of them here, but try and zipper up those legs behind you, okay? And we're going to put our elbows under our shoulders. And I don't know if you can see this. This is a common mistake in Sphinx is to have our shoulders like this. So you really want to be mindful, draw those shoulders back. Almost so you can feel them pinching together. I'm going to use your upper spine to hold this pose. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. Remember to breathe. And in this pose, be mindful about the weight you're placing into your fingertips in this. This can really improve how you approach this pose if you allow some weight into your fingertips here and then push up. Breathe. Be mindful if you tend to drop that weight of your head and your shoulders back there. You can lean forward a little bit, so make sure and keep yourself pushed up. You are working your biceps in this, working your forearms, as well as your shoulders and your neck. One more deep breath. On your exhale, go ahead and bring your forehead down to the mat. Bring both of your hands behind you. We're just going to lay here just for a second. Just a couple of breaths and slowly bring yourself to child's pose or tadpole. So you want your big toes to kiss. Bring your hips down to your heels, forehead to mat. And stretch those arms out long in front of us.
Remember to breathe. On your next exhale, while we're in tadpole, try when you exhale to drop those hips a little bit closer to your heels. Slowly. Bring your awareness back. Walk your hands slowly back up. Do you have a pillow or a bolster? We're going to do a modified camel. So there's two ways we can do this. One is you can straddle your bolster or your pillow like this, and it brings those hips up just enough. We're not going to go any further let me show you, than this. And even if this is too much, that's fine. Maybe you just come to here, but you want to let your weight sit back in your hips. And even if your body, I have an injury on my left knee, so that was very, very intense. So even if that's too much, we still want to get this upper back bend here. I'm oh, sorry, guys. So you can do easy seated and then have your hands behind you, right here behind your hips on either side. And we're just going to lean back. While we're here, wherever you are, you want to push those shoulders back, push those shoulder blades together. Breathe. And while you're here, be mindful if where your hips are. You still want these sit bones to be somewhat grounded and level with the ground, but you don't want to push them forward so that's forcing you back in the stretch. You just want them tilted forward so that you're able to lean back. You're still activating your core. Two more deep breaths here. Slowly bring your legs back out from under you. From where your hands are, we're going to come into a tabletop position and then slowly curl those toes under and we are going to go into down dog. While we're here in down dog, really be aware of your alignment here as well. You want those wrists to be just shoulder width apart. Make sure that you bring those in together. You try and bring your awareness into those fingertips. And push down with those fingertips and then push down with your arms back in your hips. Elongating your spine, your neck. 
You can pedal your dog. And we're going to stay here for a little bit. So find where it feels good for you. Again, be mindful of how much pressure and weight you're putting in those fingertips. You want to push back with your arms instead of pushing down into your arms. I hope that makes sense. Two more deep breaths here. And when you're done with that second exhale, you're going to bring your knees back down to the mat. Tops of feet come to the mat. And we're going to do thread the needle on the right side. So we're going to bring our left hand under our middle, center it. You're going to bring your right hand up. And bring it through this hole. And we're going to thread the needle on the right side. Try and walk that right, or sorry, that left arm out in front of you. And then once you do that, really lay on that right cheek instead of your temple or the side of your head really try and get that left or that right ear to the mat <clears throat> and try and you can ever so slightly roll onto that right shoulder Try and stretch it out, release some of that tension that you might have there. And you can really feel a stretch in your left arm. Be mindful of your hips, but they're still square. Don't let that right hip drop while we're in. Remember to breathe. Your next exhale, slowly walk that right or left arm back to your torso. Slowly bring your body up. Allow that right arm to come back. And find a neutral spine again. When you're ready, you're going to place your right hand in the center, and the left hand up, and go through the needle on the left side. So you're going to walk your hand up so it's above your head, still centered, and have your left arm. You can see your fingertips. Keep your hips square. Remember to breathe. Remember to try and get that ear to the mat instead of your head.
Again, if your mind starts to wander, come back to being present. Remember to breathe. And slowly walk your next exhale. Walk that right arm back to your body, your torso. Lift it up ever so slightly to lift your body back. And we're going to come to neutral spine over our mats. Before we come here, let's check in with your alignment. Make sure that your hips are over your knees. Make sure that your shoulders, elbows, and wrists are in a line so that they're all stacked. And once we find that neutral spine here, we're going to do some cat cows. I'm going to let you guys do these on your own breath. So if you need to move around a little bit with your hips or shoulders in this, please feel free. This is your practice. We're gonna inhale, arch our backs, cat, release that neck, let your head fall. On your exhale, look forward, drop those shoulders, drop your belly. Bring those tailbones up and inhale back in the cat. Let's do about eight more of these at your own breath. Two, four more cats and four more cows. And when you're done with your last cow, we're going to meet back in neutral spine. And we're going to do a pose called reclined wild child. So I'm going to show you on my left side since my computer's on the side, but we're going to drop down on your right hip. So you can actually roll on your right side. Once you're here, once you come down on to your hip, you're going to extend same side arm out to the side so that it's at this 90 degree angle with your leg. From here, you're going to bring the opposite leg up so that it's parallel, I guess, in a 90 degree angle with your other leg. Eventually, you want to be able to hold your leg up like this in this pose. We'll get there. If you want to go ahead and do that, feel free. Once you're here and you're rolled <clears throat> onto your hip, you're going to raise up the other arm and bring it back behind you, almost like you've got wings. <clears throat> this is an intense stretch. 
and our shoulders and back. You know your edge. So if anything begins to ache or you feel any pain, stop. You do have your knee raised. Try and push down with the sole of your foot into the mat. See if you can't roll your body just a little bit further out on your next exhale. And every time you breathe in this pose, be mindful that you're filling up your lungs. I almost feel like with your arms behind you like this and this and stretching shoulders. Very, it reminds me a lot of a bird. So really think about getting all that air underneath your wings. Give yourself some grace. Wherever you're at is where your body needs to be. Stay here, two more breaths. On that second exhale, bring your arm back up. So it's overhead, your hand is overhead. Bring it down to the mat. Let the other knee drop. And we're going to come into Spider-Man. So walk the right arm back up. So that we have field goal arms on either side of us. And this, we're still laying on this hip. And this leg, this would be your left leg, is going to form a 90 degree angle between your thigh and your calf and you're just going to let your forehead come to the mat just like you would in child's pose and allow everything that we just stretched to kind of release in a spider-man pose We're just going to check and catch our breath, check in, make sure that we're not overdoing anything. Remember to breathe. We're going to stay here for two more breaths. On that second exhale, lift your head, bring your leg back down so that you can zipper both legs together. We're gonna, if you'd like to, you can come up in the Sphinx just for a second, just to get everything back to center, your hips, torso. And when you're ready, we're going to do the other side and recline wild child. Just bring your arm out, could be your right arm, no, your left arm. Yeah. <clears throat> We're going to roll on that hip. Lift that arm up. 
once we get our balance with our leg and bring that hand behind us. Try and stay on your ear or your cheek. Breathe into this. Bring yourself back to this position in your alignment, wherever you're at. Try and roll on that hip on the outside ever so slightly. Feel that stretch in your arms and shoulders and chest. Relax your neck. Try and relax those shoulders down from your ears. Two more deep, deep breaths here. On that second exhale, bring that raised arm back to the mat. Slowly drop your knee, bring it down to the ground to that 90 degree angle on this side. Still going to have a little bit of weight on your hip. So if you can, bring that other arm that was under you back out slowly, 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 so that you're back on your mat. All fours are here. And bring your forehead down to the mat for the Spider-Man pose, just to relax everything that we just stretched. Forehead to mat. Check in with your shoulders, drop them down away from your ears. You still want to have most of your weight, not all of it, but most of it on this hip. Try and flex the foot on your right leg. Have the other leg Straight behind you, remember to breathe, relax. Two more deep breaths here. After that second exhale, bring your feet together. Let's 
And you're going to come back up when you're ready at your own pace. Come back to seated, not easy seated, but seated. And we're going to do a pose called Sage's Twist. So in this pose, your legs, so I have both of my feet is skewed to the right side. <coughs> so you can, whatever capacity your legs will allow you, let's see if you can see how my legs are here. You just gently want to have one leg beside you, however it feels comfortable, and one leg in front of you. We're gonna reverse this in our twist. So once you're here, check in with the left leg. Try and center it, even if it's from your left hip here, out. And then once you have that, bring your hands in front of you so that you can just lift your fingertips off the mat. We are going to walk them to the left far as you can go. You want to keep both hips square on the mat if you can. If you need your blanket to put underneath your right hip if it's raising a little bit to help out, but you want to keep both hips on the mat and you want to really elongate your torso. When you're doing this, wherever your arms are, wherever your fingertips are, Really push down into your sits bones, elongate your spine, and then allow your body to twist. Use your legs for anchors in this position. So if you start to feel a little wobbly up top, really ground down with these ankles that are on the ground already push down ever so slightly and you'll see you're able to twist a little bit further. I'm gonna stay here for about a minute. And while you're here, you should have both hips down in your mat. You should, even without being able to put your hand back here, you should be able to feel the arch of your back. Almost not that there should be any pain, but you can feel where everything is connecting from your spine to your hips. That little bend. Be mindful of all those little feelings that you have. Drop your shoulders down from your ears. Push them back. On your next exhale, see if you can twist a little bit further, just a little bit. Two more deep breaths. Slowly walk your hands back towards center. Slowly. Slowly bring that right leg around 
left leg around and do the other side. So while we're fixing our legs, once you have that done, before we start just walking over to the right side, if you can, bring your hands overhead into heart center. Get your alignment with your hips. Make sure that you have them both crammed down on the floor. And once you do, then bring your hands and fingertips over to this side, to your right side, and walk so that you can twist ever so slightly on the other side. Be mindful of your shoulders, mindful of your neck and your chest. Drop your shoulders down from your ears and allow that twist in your body. Check in with your hips. Give yourself some grace if one side's a little bit higher than the other, it's normal. Wherever you are is where you need to be in this pose. Just relax, breathe. Bring your awareness to your body. You need to push down with your ankles and feet into the mat. Just to ground down a little bit more. On that next exhale, see if you can't twist a little bit deeper. Relax your shoulders. And three more deep breaths here. exhales try and make them audible just for yourself exhale through your mouth slowly on your next exhale walk your hands back towards center And come back to easy seated. Sorry, you guys can't see my face. And we are going from here to come into cow face pose. So cow face pose, we're going to start with our right side. So we're going to bring our right arm overhead and drop our hand behind our back. And before you start trying to grasp for the other hand in this, Go ahead and feel with your fingertips where your hand is hitting on your back. And then you're going to walk the other side's fingertips as best you can to meet your other fingertips. Maybe you can grasp them. Maybe you're not there today. Maybe your body's just saying, no, this is enough shoulder stuff. Wherever you can is where you're supposed to be. Try and hold your fingertips to touch your back if you can't grasp them. 
From here, if you can grasp them, try and release your elbows so that you can feel that stretch in your fingertips and feel that stretch between your shoulder blades. Remember to breathe. Drop your shoulders down from your ears. One more deep breath here. Slowly release the bottom arm and then slowly release the top arm. Bring both your hands, that's intense. Bring both your hands, the tops of your knees, palms up. <clears throat> We're going to sit here just for a minute before we do the other side. So while we're in easy seated like this, bring your awareness into your hips and ground those hips down to the mat. Engage your core, drop your shoulders down from your ears. Okay, whenever you're ready, we're going to bring our left arm behind our back, touching in between our shoulder blades, and then we're going to meet the right arm from the bottom, <clears throat> and we're going to hold on to those fingertips. You might be able to do this on one side easily, and the other side just is not happening as normal. While you're here, release those elbows. Try and allow <clears throat> your fingertips to really push against each other. Relax those shoulders down away from your ears. Breathe. Two more deep breaths here. Try and make them audible to you. Breathe in through your nose. Hold just for a bit. Out through your mouth. Slowly on your next exhale. We're going to drop that right arm down from behind you, walk it back up, and bring your hand to your knee. Slowly allow that left arm to drop. We're going to bring that to your knee as well. You can shake anything out, whatever feels good. While we're here with our eyes closed, if you need to go ahead and go back and do some more of those little neck stretches right here, probably feel really good before we come to Shavasana. Any kind of gentle rotation of your shoulders, maybe even your spine, you can do some like cat cows while you're seated like this. Whatever feels good. Before we come into Shavasana, and when you get all the feeling back into your arms, come down. We're going to lay down in Shavasana. First, let's do a full body stretch. So bring your 
your arms overhead. And then when you're ready, you can have one hand over your, or your left hand over your heart, right hand over your belly. You can leave your arms out the side. The biggest thing is while we're here to relax these hips and legs, point your toes in so that your big toes kiss. And then as soon as they do, just let your toes fall out to the sides of your mat, to the corners. And while we're here, I have some little things I've written down about this area. So today we work on our neck and shoulders, chest, and this is all the area of our throat chakra, even our ears when we have them laying on the mat. Um, the affirmation for the throat chakra is I speak. So always remember that speaking your truth is okay. And again, my quote that I love from Dr. Seuss, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. And know that any time that you speak, you can create a healing practice for yourself. Just with your expression and your words, you can be healing. It's okay to talk, to express what you need to. Here's a little meditation note for the throat chakra. I listen with my whole self and think before I speak. When I speak, I don't back away from what is true and correct. I share and communicate effectively and respectfully with others, and I express myself fully and creatively. Even if that doesn't resonate with you right now, just think about how when we speak and communicate with others, it can bring joy. How when others communicate with us, we receive information, how much joy it can bring to us. Breathe in through your nose, hold out through your mouth. And when you're ready, slowly begin to move your fingertips, slowly begin to move your toes. Then move up to your wrists and ankles, knees and elbows. Slowly get the feeling back in all these areas of our body. There's no rush. When you're ready, at your own time, roll to your favorite side.
And when you're ready, slowly bring yourself up to seated. Whatever feels good. And if you'd like to bring your arms side and above your head, hands meet in prayer down to your heart. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.